What's up, Facebook Live? What's up, everybody all around the world? It's Silas, Kingdom Net, Kingdom Fourth here, guys. Coming on here, guys. And I want to come on here just to encourage you and, and give you some positive energy every day. Even for myself, I get, you know, I get inspired by these messages. <clears throat> but I just want to be thankful and grateful to God every day and just, you know, be thankful for my life by just showing God how grateful I am, you know, through my words and actions. So, guys, I'm coming on here, you know, talking about I want you to ride. Hey, Natasha, I want you to ride the promises of God. What do I mean by that? I want you to meditate on these on the word of God until your life becomes the word of God. Because all of us are designed, hey Nini, we're designed to look like the Word of God. We're designed to look just like God. We're supposed to be imitators. We're supposed to be exactly like Jesus. When people see us, they're supposed to see Him. They're supposed to see Jesus. When they look at us, when they speak to us, they're supposed to be speaking to Him. They're supposed to see the Father in the Son when they see us. Guys, that's that's how it's supposed to be. So I want you to meditate on the word of God. I want you to ride the word of God, the promises of God. I want you to read them day and night until they become you, until you become them. Right. Read the word every day. Meditate on the word. But here, here's a uh, here's a, a chapter that I want you to meditate on in Deuteronomy 28. The blessings on. But before I read that, I want to read one verse before I go there. And uh, I want I want to read. um Isaiah chapter 58, verse 14, in uh, the King James Version, it says, Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth. So the Lord wants you to ride among the high places of the earth. So that's why I want you to ride the promises of God. How are you going to ride among the high places of the earth? With, you can't do it without the word of God. So you got to ride the promises of God. You got to read the promises of God so you know what it is that the Lord has caused you to ride on. Because he's made you the head and not the tail. And that's what I'm about to read in Deuteronomy 28. So I want you to meditate on this, on Deuteronomy 28, the whole chapter. The blessings of uh, on obedience. Right. For being obedient to the Lord. It says now it shall come to pass. It's a lot of blessings. Right. It's, it's not easy to remember all these blessings. But he said all these blessings. Right. So in order for us to get these blessings, we got to ride these blessings. We got to read this day and night to recognize that, hey, I'm supposed to be living like this. I'm supposed to be blessed in the city and in the country. I'm supposed to be blessed everywhere. Right. He said, now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord, your God, to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today. I'm reading off my computer that the Lord, your God, will set you on a high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Like, what does that look like? He said, all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. God is not just, he's talking about manifestations. He's talking about the blessings in you that are screaming. Because a lot of you have screaming blessings in you. They're screaming, let me out, let me out. You don't have a demon in you. No, you're saved. You have blessings in you that, that need to get out. You have blessings. Me, I have blessings inside of me that want to get out. But how are they going to get out if I don't know that they're supposed to be out? They're supposed to be being manifested. People are supposed to see the blessings. Not You're not supposed to just know that there's blessing. I'm blessed. You can say I'm blessed all you want, but you're supposed to see it. Right? And that's what I'm trying to show you right here. The Lord wants, to, wants all these blessings to come upon you if you obey him and overtake you. Overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. He said all these blessings, right? It's a lot of them. He said, blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. <laughs> he said, blessed shall you be in the city and blessed shall you be in the country. He said, blessed shall you shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground. Your business is supposed to be blessed. Whatever you do is supposed to be blessed. People are supposed to see the blessing. You already know you blessed. Once you're in Christ, you blessed. Now you got to see. Now they need to see the blessings, right? They need to see it. You need to see it. He said, blessed should be the fruit of your uh, body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your fields. Your life should be on an everlasting increase. Your lifestyle should be on an everlasting increase. 
This is the promise of God. But if you don't meditate on the word of God, you won't be able to ride that promise. You won't be able to see that in your life because you don't even know it exists. He said, and the increase of your herds, right? He said, blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle. You see this increase? You're, you are increased. You have an increased anointing when you obey the Lord automatically. As soon as you obey him and listen to his word, listen to what he told you to do and obey him instantly, you are qualified for blessings. Instantly, you are qualified for increase. Instantly, you are qualified for more than enough. Instantly, you are qualified for abundance. When you get in Christ, you become a new creature. You be all these blessings when you obey him. When you obey him, right? He said, uh, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks, right? Whatever you're doing is supposed to be increasing. Whatever you have is supposed to be increasing. We don't serve a God of decrease. If you are obeying him, your business is supposed to be growing, expanding, and thriving. But if it's not, then you, you're not riding on his promise. You don't see it. You suppo It's supposed to be growing, expanding, and thriving. And when you realize that's his promise, you won't take lack. You won't take decrease. You, will, you begin to speak in faith. You begin to walk by faith and not by sight. And then he said, bless shall be your basket and your kneading bowl, right? He said, blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord is just telling, he's just breaking it down. He's saying, everything you do is, is going to be blessed if you obey me. You want to live a blessed life? You want to live an in ever increasing life? You want to live a more than enough life? You want to live an abundant life? You want to live this gospel of Jesus Christ? Obey me. So I can release all these blessings that I want to give to you. So I can release the blessings that are inside of you crying. All, everybody on here, you got screaming blessings, not screaming demons. None of you are, if you're following Christ, you don't have a demon. Because the spirit of God, the demons can't come near you. I'm just keeping it real. You got screaming blessings inside of you. They're screaming that, 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 that promise of God that you're supposed to be this successful business owner day and night is screaming in your ears. It's screaming in you, man. I don't want to go to work. It's screaming to you. I don't want to go to a nine to five job. It's screaming to you. It's crying to you. That entrepreneur blessing is in you screaming. Let me out. Let me out. Get me out of here. Everybody on here, you got blessings inside of you that are screaming to be released out. But from this day forth, you're going to begin to walk in those blessings. You're going to begin to be those blessings that's inside of you. You're going to begin to be the promise of God. You know why? Because you're going to ride the word of God. You're going to ride the word of God. Like you saw me in that picture of that horse. You're going to begin to ride among the high places of the Lord because you're going to realize that, no, I'm not supposed to be lacking. I'm not supposed to be sick. I'm healed by his stripes. I'm healed by his stripes. I'm blessed. I deserve to be blessed because I am in Christ. And when you're in Christ, you become a new creature. When you're in Christ, you automatically receive prosperity. When you're in Christ, you auto automatically receive salvation. You receive everything. You get redeemed. Everything comes with Jesus. When you get saved, when you got saved, you got more than just eternal life in heaven. You got eternal life, right? You, you got eternal life to come down on earth while you're on earth. He said, as it is in heaven, let it be done on earth, right? The Lord wants to bring heaven on earth through you. Happy birthday, Christopher Stanley. What's up, brother? Right? The, the, the Lord wants to bring heaven down on earth to you. The Lord, our God, he wants to show the heathen blessings. He wants them to see you and, and scream. He wants them to see you and be like, oh my, that, wow. It's not supposed to be the opposite way. We're not supposed to see them and be in awe. They're supposed to see us because they see Christ and be in awe. And be like, man, what must I do to be saved? What must I do? That's how it's supposed to be. And that's how it's going to be. <laughs>
<laughs> but guys, let me finish reading. It said, blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. Wherever you go and whatever you do, you will be blessed. That's, that's what it's saying. Wherever you go, Deuteronomy 28 verse 6, in the King James Version, it says, wherever you go and whatever you do, you will be blessed. See, you don't believe that because you haven't, rid you haven't ridden on that ride. See, I didn't believe I could ride a horse until I rode a horse. Right? I didn't believe it. I never believed it. Right? I didn't believe I could drive a car until I actually drove the car and begin to practice. See, you haven't practiced this word enough so you don't believe it can happen. You don't believe it. Because if you believed it, you will see it. He said, wherever you go, Nene, wherever you go and whatever you do, you will be blessed. Natasha, wherever you go and whatever you do, you will be blessed. Solace Kingdom Forum, wherever I go and whatever I do, I will be blessed. Christopher Stanley, wherever you go and whatever you do, you will be blessed. Remember, if you hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. Hearken means to listen to the Lord with an intention to do what he said. That's what it means. Not just to hear him, but to do what he said. With an intention to do what he said. So after he said, wherever you go and whatever you do, you will be blessed. The Lord said that. You see all these promises? Why aren't you riding in them? We got to ride this. We got to ride this ride of faith. We got to ride this ride of blessings that the Lord has for us. He said, the, the Lord said, the Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated. Before your face, you're going to see them defeated. You're not going to be praying for them to be defeated. You're going to love your enemies. But the Lord said, since you're loving them and they're coming against you, I'm getting ready to get them down. They can't come against you. They messing up. You, you mine. When they disrespect you, they disrespect me because I am you. I'm in you. Touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. Your enemy of poverty. Your enemy of sickness. Your enemy of failure. Your enemy of delay. Your enemy of deception. Your enemy of confusion. God is not the author of confusion. Any enemy that is rising up against you, I decree and declare right now that it is done. That it will not come against you anymore. That it has no power to come against you. That it has been defeated by the Lord. In the name of Jesus. See, I can decree and declare that because the Lord is backing me up. He said, he will cause my enemies, he will cause your enemies to be defeated right before your face. He said it, so I can decree and declare it. If God said it, you can decree and declare it. Praise the Lord. If God said it, you can decree and declare it. And declare it. Say this. I'll never have to face an enemy another day in my life. All my enemies are defeated. Now. The Lord has handled them. In Jesus name. It is done. It is done. Woo. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Right. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come. I love this. He said, these are promises. We don't read it enough so we don't even understand that we letting people come against us when they don't have no power to come against us. We letting sickness come against us when they don't have no power. We letting poverty come against us when it, it don't have power. We've been redeemed from the curse of the law, right? We, cursed, we don't, we're blessed. What is a curse? What is poverty? What is sickness? What is confusion? I got clarity. I got prosperity. I'm saved. I'm healed. I'm protected. I'm anointed. The angels of the Lord minister prosperity to me all throughout the day. The angels of the Lord protect me everywhere I go. Come on. You got to have faith. But you can't get faith without hearing. You got to hear the word. Over and over. You got to hear these blessings over and over and over again. So you become it. Because you become what you think about. If I'm thinking about these blessings, I'm going to become the blessing. Right? And that's what the Lord wants us to be. He wants us to be this walking blessing that obeys Him. That's saved. That's prosperous. Right? You got to... The Lord wants you prosperous. Don't think He wants you poor. I don't understand. Why would you think He wants you poor when he created the whole world, 
He doesn't want you greedy. We know that. He wants you prosperous. He wants you prosperous on a mission. He wants you prosperous with a vision. Right? Not just to have it to boast, but he wants it to show itself mighty on the earth to so people can know that it is the Lord that promotes. It is the Lord that increases. It is his spirit that does all these great things. He wants to get all the glory through you. But y'all got to work as a team. We got to work with the Lord as a team. Me and God are a team. When my business go down, his team, his team go down. Right? When I'm sick, the Lord, right? But I'm not sick. I'm healed. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. If something in your life is not right, remember you and the Lord are a team. And he got promises for you that can fix that thing in your life. <clears throat> so he said, the Lord will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and they shall flee before you seven ways. <laughs> they will come against you one way and the Lord will just, he will cause them to flee seven different ways. Your enemy of poverty that came against you one way, right? You lost your one job. The Lord going to give you seven different streams of income. <laughs> He's going to give you seven different sources, seven different resources, because God is our only source, right? Whatever enemy came against you one way, the Lord will smack it seven different ways. Get back. Get back. Get off my child. Seven different smacks. Get off my child. Poverty. Get off my child. Sickness. Get off my child. Whatever coming, whatever, seven different ways. You better receive that thing. I'll receive it. Because it's not me. It's not my word. It's his. He said, your enemy. What is your enemy? It's not just. Remember, your enemy is never a person. Your enemy is the spirit that is using that person. Your enemy is the spirits that's coming against you. Remember, we don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against the spirits. Principalities. We fight against the enemy. It's an enemy over your finances. He don't want you to be free. He don't want you to go to that next level because he know if you become what the Lord wants you to become, game over. You're going to release some things in the earth. You're going to bless some people. You're gonna, your family will never be broke another day in your life. You are only one blessing away from your breakthrough. And the Lord has it for you and it's coming to you. I believe it. You better receive it by faith, by faith. I can't have, I can't receive it for you. According to your faith, be it unto you. We read the Bible over and over again and we wonder why nothing happens. I, I, it happens to me too. I'm like, Lord, wow. And guess what? I got to renew my faith. He said, you got, you haven't heard it enough. You don't believe it. That's it. Because it's already true. I haven't heard this enough. Whatever issue you're going through, open the Bible, find a verse and meditate on it. Write that promise until it happens. Write that promise of God until you see it. Write it until the enemies coming against you see that you are called by the name of the Lord your God. And they shall be afraid of you. They shall respect you. They shall see the glory. No, I'm not talking, they not just, they're they not going to just see you saying, oh, praise the Lord. No, they're going to see the Lord on you. When they see you, they're going to see your praise. They're going to see your worship. They're going to see. This is evidence. This is manifestation. Number seven, the number of completion. The number seven, the, the number of completion. Thank you, Ms. Emilia. <clears throat> Thank you. Seven completion. So I'm gonna finish reading this. It's, it's a long blessing, right? Because the it's a long blessing because the Lord wants you to be blessed forever, <laughs> right? He wants you to be blessed forever. That's why we he got more. He got all these blessings in the Bible because he wants you to understand you're supposed to be blessed every day. He said <clears throat> after that, you know, your your enemy smacked, you know, defeated seven different ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses. That's your bank accounts. That's your wallets. That's, that's your finances. That's your investments. 
Right. I invested yesterday. The Lord told me to invest and I invested a 0 0.10 cent lot size in the foreign exchange market. And I, and I profited. The Lord helped me to profit twenty eight dollars. But I was just resting. I didn't go to work to get that. That's a blessing. My money made me money. I decree and declare that your money will make you money. Do you know how blessed that is that you don't have to go to a nine to five? You don't have to work for money, but your money can make you money. That's the Lord's blessing. And I decree and declare that you shall receive it. And the Lord will give you wisdom on how to make your money, make you more money. In the name of Jesus, receive it. Receive that blessing. I receive it, Lord. He said, man, you got to understand prosperity is your nature because you're made in God's image and like in likeness. He made the whole world. God is not broke. God is not poor. The whole world is his. You better get that broke mentality out of here. I don't understand. Look at your prayers right now. Tell me right now. Are you not asking God to bless you more financially? I know you are. I know you are. That's the majority of Christian prayers. That's the majority of people prayers for more finances. It's healing and it's healing and finances. Healing and finances. But the Lord has already done it. You're a wealthy person. You're a wealthy anointed nation. What do you say, Miss Imonitia? You said a mighty, mighty anointed nation is man, right? That means man, right? With your ministry, with your t-shirts that you create. You're, she has beautiful t-shirts and awesome ministry, uh, awesome ministry, right? And she comes up with, God gives her uh, different acronyms and different things. And she said, mighty anointed nation. Guys, all of us are mighty anointed nations. God is in us. And when you realize that you and God are one, you and God are one. Stop looking at yourself like God is over there and you're right here. No. When God moves, you move. Just like that. When God moves, you move. You got to be in sync with the Father. See, a lot of you are off balance. You, you, you're over here. When God said, I'm right here, you're supposed to be blessed. Right? You're going through this when you don't even understand. If you just fix your eyes on, on Jesus. Fix your eyes on the author and finisher of our faith. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Seek first, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added. Look, look, you over here, you think, you look, you're like, man, Lord, why is everything going bad? But if you just adjust yourself, fix your eyes on his promise, you'll see all these blessings are supposed to be mine. All these blessings are coming upon me right now. Guys, I'm not done. These blessings are long, right? Right? He said the Lord will command. I love this. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God has given you. What? Say this. I got prosperous hands. Whatever my hands touch flourish. That's what the Lord did for Joseph. Everything he touched flourished. Flourished flourisheth even while he was in slavery right everything you touch from today on will be blessed but you got to receive that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth by faith receive it take it because it's yours it's not Silas King IV telling you it's the Lord's word it's the Lord speaking through me because we're a team right and you got Christ in you too we're all a part of the same body we make up one body, one Lord, one baptism. We're all one body, but we all have different functions and we're here to help each other. And I'm here to help you to tell you that you'll never be broke another day in your life. You'll never be without a blessing with another day in your life. You'll never be under a curse another day in your life. Every wrong prayer spoken over, spoken over your life, I renounce it now in the name of Jesus. If anybody has ever called you a witch, if anybody has ever called you a warlock, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. You are the spirit of God. If 
anybody that rises up against you. God said, this is what the Lord said. He said, he suffered, not a witch shall live. So we break witchcraft by the blood of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. Any spirit rising up against you, that's not the spirit of God. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I'm so happy and grateful for the Lord Jesus Christ, guys. These blessings are coming on you right now. because You know why they're coming on you? Because you're hearing it. And as you hear it, it's going into your heart. And as you hear what you think in your heart, you become. You're going to begin to speak. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. My hands are blessed. Remember, we're supposed to live by faith. So if we don't see it happening, we got to keep riding that promise of God until it happens. Don't quit speaking the word of God until you see the manifestation. Don't quit saying by his stripes, I am healed until you see your healing. Beat the devil in the throat. Beat the devil in the head. Beat him up with the word of God. We're too strong to be living lives unlike Christ. We're supposed to be living like Christ. Our life is supposed to look like Christ, not a crisis. We are made in his image and likeness. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is too good, guys. The Lord will command a blessing on you in the storehouse, right? In all that you set your hand upon. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord God is giving you. God is giving you all these blessings. Your mama not giving it. Your dad not getting it. You not giving it to yourself. Somebody else in your business, they not giving it to you. The Lord is giving you the promises. He's giving you the blessing. The blessed hands. Everything your hands touch is blessed. He's giving you land as well. I decree and declare that if you're renting a house, that you should never rent a house another day in your life. You should be an owner and not a renter in the name of Jesus. Say it. I will own my own home in the name of Jesus. Say it. You got to speak it. I will own my own car. Speak it. You should never lend. I mean, you should never borrow another day in your life. You are the lender. Thank you, Lord, for correcting me. You are the lender and not the borrower. You will own your own home. You will own your own cars. No more car notes. No more renting. God is going to give you the land. He said it right here. But why don't we have it? Because we have not read. We haven't written on this verse. We haven't written on his promise long enough for it to happen. We haven't read the promise that we're supposed to have our own land. Guys, I'm out here in the country. There's people with mansions out here with big land, with cattle, constantly increasing. That's what the Lord wants for you. Supernatural debt cancellation. Especially if you got debt, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. You shall live in the abundance of peace and prosperity from the Lord. Hallelujah. It's a Bible verse where the Lord says this. Where is it? It's in Jeremiah Right here. It's in my prayer closet. It's in Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 9. He said, you shall live in abundant prosperity and peace that I will provide for you. <clears throat> That's what the Lord said. Not me. His word. So you can never fail when you speak on his word. If, if his word says it, then it's done. Can't nobody fight you if you speak in his word. The enemy can't fight you if you speak in his word, if you know his word. My sheep know my voice and no other voice will they follow. If you, if your finances don't look like the word, because the word said that you're prosperous. Look, God said that you're the lender. How are you going to lend when your bank says zero dollars? Who are you going to lend to? How are you going to be a blessing when you don't have any money? How? How are you going to be blessed in a city? Blessing? How are you going to bless other people when you don't have a blessing? All of that's going to change tonight. Your mindset is changing tonight. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You should never waste another dollar in the name of Jesus, another day in your life. All the money God gives you, you shall use it wisely in the name of Jesus. You shall tithe and offer and be blessed everywhere you go in the name of Jesus from today forth. Receive it by faith. You got to receive it because it's God's word. He wants you blessed. He wants you blessed. He does not want you cursed. He does not want you cursed. A curse is anything that makes you sad. A curse is anything that brings you sorrow. The Lord said the blessing of the Lord brings wealth, brings prosperity, brings good things. The blessing of the Lord 
brings wealth without painful toil for it. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and he adds no sorrow. Proverbs 10, 22. So a blessing does not add sorrow. A curse adds sorrow. A blessing adds joy. The Lord's blessing is on your life. Guys, I'm not done. The promises of God are still more. There's still more. The Lord wants you to be blessed. He does not want you to be stressed. He does not want you to be depressed. He does not want you to be upset. Guys, what you're going through is just a test for the testimony that the Lord is about to bring you up out of this mess. I'm telling you. Your mess is a message of how good and how great our God is. The Holy Spirit is on your life. Prosperity is on your life. Salvation is on your life. Eternal life, when you leave the earth, is on your life. More abundant life on earth is on your life. Look, prosperity is your nature and you're made in the Lord Jesus. This is why, because you're made in his image and likeness. Abundance is your nature because you're made in his image and likeness. This is why you feel sad when you cannot give. Have you ever experienced this? I know for me, last Christmas, I wanted to give, but I couldn't. And it hurt me because giving abundance is our nature. But this Christmas is going to be on. Right? This resurrection. Oh, look, this giving is going to be on. Everything this year is going to be on. Birthday is on. My mom's birthday on April 21st is on. I'll never not be able to give when I want to give another day in my life. Speak it. I'll never not be able to give when I want to give another day in my life. You got to get mad at what the enemy has been bringing to you. And you got to rebuke what he's brought to you. You got to rebuke his report. His report is not true. It's false. The truth is I'm a lender. If I want to bless my mom, I'm going to bless her. If I want to bless somebody on their birthday, I'm going to bless them. If I want to give to my nieces and nephews, I'm going to give. I'm a lender and not the borrower. I'm blessed. And you got to get that same attitude. You got to get mad at what the enemy has been doing in your life for these years. And you got to get a mad mentality that you want to shift your mind and shift your tactics. I decree and declare that the blessings of the Lord shall overtake you in your life so fast that the enemy ain't going to be able to see it. Just like that. Take the light in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart, of our heart. You and the Lord have touched and agreed on what it is that you want and it's coming to pass now. In the name of Jesus, by faith receive it. Because it's done. I'm not done, guys. He said, he said, uh, the Lord will command, all right. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Remember, we got to walk in God's ways. If you've been obedient to him, you have all the rights to say I'm blessed. If you've been obeying him, if you in Christ, you a new creature, you got all the rights to act. You got all the rights to act like it. It's not arrogance. It's confidence. It's Godfidence. I'm acting like this. I'm speaking like this because God is backing me up. See, guys, look at this. If you wanted to get your house bill for a million dollars and I was your investor and I said, I'm giving you a million dollars. You have it. Go build your house. You will be so confident to get up in the morning and go tell those builders how you want your house to design your house. Well, that's the same thing God is doing. He said, this is your promise. I'm backing you up. You blessed in the city. Act like it. You blessed in the country. You blessed everywhere you go. The works of your hands is blessed. When you sharing your business opportunity, when you talking to people, know that the people you sharing it with, the Lord sent them to you. You blessed. Your business about to take off like it never has before. The Lord is about to blow your expectations. Don't limit me, says the Lord, for I am not a limit God, but I have no limits. Take my take the lid off of me. I will never limit God another day in my life because he's been too good to me. He's blessed me too much. He's shown up too much. When all the lights was off in my life, he turned the light on. 
When everybody left me, he kept me. When everybody left me, he kept me. So don't you give up on God. So you obey him. The Lord will establish your holy people just as he sworn to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Look, I love this. I'm almost done, guys. Bear with me. Bear with me. The Lord, let the Lord go. Let the Holy Spirit move. Increase, blessings, flourishing, prosperity, salvation. The salvation of the Lord. You shall see the whole package. You shall see the whole package. You shall see the whole package. We are seated on the right hand of God. Visualize this. You're seated on the right hand hand of God. You, you, you're with Jesus. You're right there. You can hear the Father's voice clear because you're that close to him. You're not confused. You're not confused. Okay? You're not confused. You have clarity of vision. Clarity of vision helps you to accelerate to your goal. The only reason you've been stuck is because you have not known that you have clarity of a vision. The Lord said you're blessed. I want you to meditate on Deuteronomy 28. Okay? Then the Lord said, the Lord said, then all peoples of the earth shall see. Listen. He said, then all peoples of the earth. All. How many people is on the earth? Because I'm, I'm reading this like a child. If I had my niece or nephew read this, they'll be like, all, oh, uncle. They'll be like, everybody. I mean, that, that's all, all trillion, however many people on the earth. He said, all, all peoples of the earth, that's Asian, whatever they, whatever they are, black, white, whatever they are, Mexican, whatever they are, all peoples of the earth shall see. They should not, they, they're not going to just hear you praising the Lord, but they're going to see your praise. They're going to see you walking in the promises of the Lord. Do you hear me? I'm talking about manifestation. This is the type of God we serve. He manifests so the sinner can confess. <laughs> he manifests so the sinner can confess. That's what he did for me when I was a sinner, when I was in the world. He manifested himself to me in a way so I could confess that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior and he died for my sins. Guys, don't think you're going to get these blessings without going through the right gate. There's only one gate to this blessing. That's Jesus Christ. Don't think I'm playing around now. I'm talking, you, you got to go through Jesus first. If you've been through Jesus, now I'm, I'm showing you what's on the other side of that gate. What's properly yours if you went through the right gate. Don't play with me. We're talking about Jesus Christ. The name above all name. The man that saved me millions of times. Right? I'm speaking it to my future too. Because every day, I'm a lot. The man that saved me so many times, I can't count. Can't count it. He's a blessing. He said, if you keep, look, he said, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, then all peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord. And they shall be afraid of you. When people see you, look, if you've been getting disrespect, if you work at a job and somebody's been disrespect you, from today forth, in the name of Jesus, they shall respect you. They shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord your God. They shall respect you wherever you are. You shall be respected. Because you are a child of the you are the child of the most high God. Look, God was showing me something about a Proverbs 31 woman. This is for the women. The Lord said, Who can find in Proverbs? He said, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price. You hear that word price? For her price is worth more than rubies. I searched up the word rubies. One of the most largest rubies was worth $30 million. He said her price is far beyond rubies. Do you know that you're far beyond $30 million? You're far beyond rubies. Every Proverbs virtuous woman. That's why you need a man that is blessed. Because your price is high. And you can't have just anybody. That's what the Lord was showing me. He said if you want a virtuous woman, you got to be a virtuous man. You got to be a blessed man. You got to obey my commands. He don't want to give his daughter to just anybody. You, every woman of God, you are valuable. You have no limits to your worth. I'm telling you. That's what the Lord was telling me. I went and searched up the rubies. And a ruby 
was worth, the, the, the biggest one, the most expensive one was $30 million. And the Lord said, every woman of God is worth way more than $30 million. They're worth way more than anything on this earth. Hallelujah. I just heard that in my spirit. I, I think the Holy Spirit just said hallelujah. Because I just heard hallelujah. I just heard hallelujah. And I never heard the Holy Spirit just say hallelujah. So hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I heard the Holy Spirit say thank you, Jesus. You got to release your thanks. You got to release your praise to the Most High God. Every one of you, everybody is valuable. Remember that. God bought you with a price. Guys, you way more than $30 million. Y'all worth way more than that. Pr price, priceless. No price on you. Way more. That's why you need somebody that's going to respect you. This is what the Lord was telling me. Because I will be married in the future. Right? And I got to know who I'm supposed to be for my wife. Right? So I got to read the word of God. And God was telling me that the, the, one, the wife, your wife, is worth more than everything on this earth. So you got to treat her such. You got to be ready to take care of her. You got to be ready for that blessing. Because when a man finds a good, when a man finds a wife, right? He finds a good thing, right? So you, you got to understand that each one of you are good things. And the reason I'm saying this is because there's a whole bunch, there's women on here that I respect. And I want to tell you what the Lord told me about you. Each one of you, including my three older sisters and my mom, right? Y'all are valuable. So if a man cannot value you, then he does not deserve you. That's what the Lord said. And it's going to be all, it's not just his words. It's not just my words. It's going to be based off my actions. It's going to be based off my actions. I can say I love you, but I got to show it. Right? Actions. And that's the same thing with God. He wants to show you with his actions that he loves you. He said, the Lord said this, then all peoples of the earth shall see. He wants people to see the blessing. He wants them to see the Lord's actions towards you for obeying him, for treating the Lord with value, for respecting him, right? And they should be afraid of you, right? Right? All people of the earth, they should respect you, right? And then the Lord said this, and the Lord will grant you plenty of goods. This blessing is long. Right. This is this is this is where we're supposed to be living. He said, and the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock and in the produce of your ground, in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord wants you blessed. He wants you to have your own land. He wants your business to be prosperous. He wants you to be prosperous. He wants you to be successful. He wants your wife to be successful. He wants your husband to be successful. He wants everybody to be blessed. That's obeying him. Right. In the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. Then the Lord says this. He said, the Lord will open to you his good treasure. Right now, everybody on here, you're standing underneath an open heaven. And the Lord is going to pour out his treasure to you if you have been obeying him and walking in his commands. In the name of Jesus, receive it by faith. Receive it by faith. He said, the Lord will open to you his good treasure. The heavens. The heavens is his good treasure. He's going to open the heavens so the heavens can be seen on the earth. Guys, I'm almost done. Prosperity is yours. That's what the Lord just said. Hallelujah. He's going to multiply you and he's going to make your name great. To give the rain to your land in this season and to bless all the work of your hand. He said it again. He's reminding you. You got to write this blessing. You shall lend to many nations, but you should not borrow from today forth, I decree and declare that I, that you, will never borrow from anybody another day in your life in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Woo! Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. Keep, hear me. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. Receive it, guys. You shall be above only and never beneath. My goodness, man. Do y'all hear what the Lord is saying? Well, you you got to ride this. Because right now, you might be the tail, but you're not supposed to be there. You got to readjust so you can get back to where you're supposed to be. 
You are the you the head, right? He said you'll be the head. And he said you shall be above only, and never beneath, and not beneath. Can you picture yourself being above only? What does that look like in your business? Stop going for the mediocre. Go for the top. That's where you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be at the top only. He said you should be above only. I'm only supposed to be above. I'm never supposed to be beneath. I'm only supposed to be above. My finances, my health, my, my life, my relationships, they're supposed to be up. My lifestyle is supposed to be up. Struggle can't have struggle ain't I don't live a struggle. I live a blessing. My life is a blessing. Stop saying you're struggling. Say you're blessing. I'm in the blessing right now. When people see me, I say, man, do you see this on me? They be like, what? I say the blessing of the Lord is on me. Because when I say that, I'm telling the truth. I'm not lying. Here's a lie. If I said the curse is on me, that's that's a lie. The devil is a liar. We're with the Messiah. The blessing is on me. Natasha, you see this on me? The blessing is on me. Natasha, I see the blessing on you. Ariani, I see the blessing on you. Nini, I see the blessing on you. It's all over you. <laughs> the blessing is all on me. The blessing of the Lord that maketh rich and he had of no sorrow. It's on me. You see it? You see the blessing is on me. Start confessing that. Do it. <laughs> the blessing is on you guys. I'm almost done. All right. And if you... Yeah, and that's it. And then the Lord said, if you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to obey them, so you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day, to the right or to the left, to go after other guys to serve them. So basically, the Lord has all these blessings for you if you do one thing. If you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you obey Him, do exactly what Jesus tells you to do. Just like his mom told them when Jesus turned the water to wine. It was for legal reasons why he did that, if you study that. Right? He said, when Jesus turned that water to wine, he did that to, his mom told him to do that because she knew some rules. Because they would have lost some money. The people that put on that event, they would have lost some money if they didn't do it. It was a rule that they needed another cup of wine. Remember our pastor was talking about it? I'm learning. Nene, I don't know if he was there at that at that service. I was, I'm learning a little bit. I'm learning a little bit. I'm learning. But look, that's what God wants us to do, right? He wants us to obey him once we get in Christ. It's not enough to just receive him. I've seen people get baptized and they still didn't transform their mind. Did you know that? I've seen people receive Jesus Christ, but they still live in the same life. But me, when I decided, when no, when the Lord told me to go get baptized, I said, man, it's on. I can't, I'm, I got to go full time with this. I can't play with this. This is very valuable. The Lord called me to get baptized? That's more valuable than anything on the, in the world. He called me to be saved. He said, he gave me this opportunity. And people got a poor mentality, passing over opportunities repeatedly. But I decree and declare that you shall not pass over the opportunity to be saved by Jesus Christ. The greatest opportunity in your entire life. Because if you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you will begin to see the Lord in all you do. So... This whole blessing that I'm talking about and writing the promises is not going to work if you're not in Christ. Because if you ain't in Christ, you're in a crisis. If you ain't in Christ, you're in a crisis. I've been in a crisis before and I didn't like it. So I got in Christ. Right? So you got to stay with him. You got to stay in Christ. Stay in the word. No matter what's coming against you, stop looking at where you are. Stop looking at it. Be thankful for where you are. But see where God is taking you. Ride the promises. Ride the promises of God. Ride the word of God until it happens. Get wealth. You have the power. Deuteronomy 8.18. God is giving you the power to get wealth. 
so he may establish his covenant with you as he swore to your fathers as it is this day. But you shall remember him when you get the wealth. You shall remember him when he delivers you. You shall remember him when all these blessings overtake you. You shall remember him when he does it. That's the key. So guys, thank you, Lord. Prosperity is your nature, guys. Because we're made in God's image and likeness. I break every shackle of shame off of your life right now. Fall in the name of Jesus. I break every shackle of disgrace off of your life in the name of Jesus. Fall right now in the name of Jesus. I got the power. Christ, you got it too. Remember Paul and Silas? Remember what they did? They prayed and sang praises to God and all those chains fell. Everything holding you down from today forth should not have power over you again in the name of Jesus. Receive it by faith. Every limitation that has been held against you shall be dissolved right now in the name of Jesus. Every power working against you shall be powerless now in the name of Jesus. I shut down the powers of hell that's coming against you in the name of Jesus. And I command the Holy Ghost to prevail in your life in the name of Jesus. When people see you, they shall see how your Father has your life in heaven on earth in the name of Jesus. The reason I can decree and declare this is because it's the promise of God. He said, as it is in heaven, let it be done on earth. And it's time for people to see how good our Father is in heaven on earth. God, excuse me. God bless and have an outstanding day. Later. Take care. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who do what is right. Hey, guys, one more thing. My YouTube is YouTube.com slash Solace King Music. Uh, amen. Solace King Music. S-I-L-A-S-K-I-N-G-M-U-S-I-C. -S -S Later. You got to touch and agree. It's, I can't do it for you. You got to believe. You got to have faith to receive it. You see that Bible verse is backwards, but it says, For with God, nothing will be impossible. If you know you with him, then go ahead and get it. Get the blessings. We are the righteous. Thank you. That, that's exactly what, that's the last thing I need to say. Confess this. We are, no, no, say it for yourself. I am the righteousness of God in. Remember, you're either in Christ or you're in a crisis. And I'm not, I'm not about that life. I'm in Christ. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Later.